Today we're going to be looking at Walter Kostaler's central place theory. In class we looked at the idea of a central business district and we defined what services are and that they could be public, um, consumer, or uh, business types of services. But what Walter Kostaler was trying to uh, analyze was where are services actually located in a given city and why are they there? Um, what he noticed was in early um, 19th hundreds in Germany was that people were starting to go to central places um, to exchange or to get goods and services that they needed. And so he developed this model um, to help explain that and it's something that's still applicable today. So the things that you need to not only understand about the definition of what the central place theory is, but you, in order to understand it well you should also be familiar with the terms threshold, range, and hinterland. Um, threshold being the number of people that are needed to support a particular service. The range in which how far would people actually be willing to travel to go as, to get this particular good or service. And then the hinterland, which is the market area, the area surrounding in which um, market customers are going to be attracted from. So looking at this a little bit more closely, again, is this idea of threshold. So if we think about a market, a particular place, um, the threshold is going to be how how many people are needed to support that particular service? So if we think of uh, you know, a, uh, something like a university, um, you know, that there's a certain amount of students that have to be there. In other words, there's got to be a big enough population that um, young people are there to, get, to, to come to pay the tuition to get an education. Or if we think about um, a fire station, you know, to provide a, fire sta a working fire station with fire trucks and a crew of firemen uh, and women, how many people need to be in that community for it to, to actually be a worthwhile investment? Um, on the other hand, we could take something like a gas station, something that is, come, is readily used and, and um, consumed regularly, or a grocery store, milk, bread. Um, there's a different threshold that are needed for those particular services. When we think of range, we think about things that are, what are how far are people willing to travel? Now, if you had to travel 20 minutes just to get a loaf of bread every time you needed it, um, that would be tiresome and most people wouldn't want to do that. Um, and therefore you see bread offered in multiple locations. Whereas if you're going to go buy something, a specialty item, say a diamond ring, um, and it's, uh, you know, you're, you're more likely to find it in fewer places at exclusive jewelry shops um, or to look at um, a, a very specific need. So, for example, in downtown Minneapolis, you have HCMC, Hennepin County Medical Center, which is the top level trauma care clinic in the entire state and in some cases the region. Um, and so they actually have a helipad that brings people in from a very long range um, that they couldn't support that kind of hospital and that kind of staff um, uh, you know, in every community but they, they has an extended range because people go there for very specialized and emergency medical needs. So threshold and range are a very important part of Kostaler's theory. Um, but because of these things, um, the kinds of services we're going to find in any particular place or population or settlement is going to be based on that hierarchy. And so when we look at these urban areas, these market areas, areas we're going to see um, a, a greater variety of, of services provided um, and then at the smaller, in the smaller places, you're going to see a, a, a more scarce offering of these particular services. So instead of having very specialized types of, of stores and, and big public um, uh, institutions, you're likely to see, you know, the road stop, um, roadside cafe, and maybe a gas station. And then we have, you know, everything in between. Um, so if you take just even our local community, Arden Hills, Shoreview, Venice Heights, and look at the services provided, it falls somewhere in between. Uh, this, the, the small town and, and you know, really looking at the urban center. So um, when we look at this, Kristaller, you know, designed this model and at first he started using circles and realized that you know, you're going to either overlap market areas or hinterlands or you're going to leave spaces out. And then he also looked at squares, but then if you look at the distance from the center of the square, it's going to be a longer distance to the corners versus the perimeter, other places in the perimeter at right angles. So he settled on a hexagon, which again isn't perfect, but it's a sort of a balance between the two um, shapes and, and covers it, the, the entire region in a more effective way. And so what you get is this overlapping 
um, hierarchy of, of settlements or um, services that are going to be provided as a result of central place theory. And we're going to help in class, we're going to do a couple activities to help illustrate this concept, but you should be very familiar with, again, with the basic idea of the central place theory and the terms associated with it. One example that I'll share with you is if we were to look at, say, Kroger Supermarkets, which is a, a, a rest, a, a, a chain of supermarkets, and this is in particular in Dayton, Ohio. Um, and you can see where the red dots represent the location and the loose, the general threshold and range of these each individual Kroger um, location. And you notice they're not perfect hexagons, but you can see the general shape. There's, they're about, um, they're similar in size and shape to represent the different thresholds and range is, that would be served by these various supermarkets. And so, well, it's not, again, because it's a model, it's not going to be perfect hexagons, but it, you can see where the model starts to reflect um, itself in reality in this particular example. So again, you know, just taking a look at these, these hexagons and going back and looking at uh, what, it might, what it might appear to be, it, it's, it should be pretty apparent. This is another example more locally and we could talk about this more in class, but this is a local uh, retailer that is very new to the region. And uh, so I'll leave you a little bit up in the air, but what, what do you think it is? And uh, um, bring your thoughts to class. <laughs>